I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone and Ruel. And salutations to the Akim around the world, pushing this truth in sincerity. All right to the other topic here called baptism, which is something a lot of people still don't understand today. I'll start with Matthew 3 and 1. Say, so, um, in those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So, back in those days, John used to be baptizing people, preaching repentance. Because he was the one paving the way for the Messiah. Today's verse 11. They say, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Now, some, this is a jump over real people's head. As John the Baptist said, I'll read it over. It say, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. It say, But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you. It didn't say a next person will baptize you. He, which is the Messiah, he shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Now some people just go to church and as the pastor just dip them in water and baptize them. But as John specifically said, he, which is the Messiah, will baptize you, not another person. But what most people don't understand is, since the time from before the Messiah to the time after the Messiah, things became a little different. The times before the Messiah, things were more carnal. On the time after the Messiah, things became more spiritual. Just like how they used to build temples for the Messiah in the past. In these days, you are the temple. You understand? It became more spiritual. That's that that was when he was telling them the temple will be destroyed and in three days it will be rebuilt. They was thinking the whole building that then the halls that there was in. But they didn't understand on a spiritual level and the water for baptism is no different it says Ephesians 5 verse 26 it say that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word because the word does be referred to as water and is be referred to as bread or sustenance but water is also one of the references to the word. Because as they say, if you take a faggot and dip him in water, when he come out, he will, he will just be a wet faggot. Dipping him in water would not change him or make him righteous. But if a faggot was to actually follow the scriptures, he would be different because his whole life would change. That is the water, which is the word, is how it has cleansed your spirit. The only thing physical water does do is clean your body. But your spirit is what the most I working with. And that is the water they're referring to. Some people just view it on a carnal level and say it's actual water to dip them in. And then when they come out of the water, they're going and live the same exact way. But the water that the scriptures referring to in, in these times is the scriptures itself that you had to apply and live by, which will actually make you different internally, not just clean you externally. But as the same Matthew, they say, the Messiah will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Now, if that was a carnal, a carnal explanation also, how it is you're going and baptize somebody with fire? It's obvious. If somebody here that the first thing they're thinking is some kind of Salem witch burning somebody. But that fire is something spiritual also. So there is Zechariah. 13 I'll start from 8 it say and it shall come to pass that in the, in all the land saith the Lord 
two parts therein shall be cut off and die and this referring to the two thirds the ones who will never change will never never apply that water which is the scriptures to the life and be how the most I want them to be it shall be cut off and die and the third part shall be left which is the wanted and the elect it say and I will bring the third part through the fire right the Holy Spirit and with fire it say I will bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined and will try them as gold is tried they shall call upon my name and I will hear them I will say it is my people and they shall say the Lord is my God and this is what the fire refer to not an actual fire itself the fire refers to tribulation so it is Ecclesiasticus a book in the Apocrypha Sirach 2 I'll start from 1 it says my son if thou come to serve the Lord prepare thy soul for temptation it says set thy heart aright and constantly endure which is the kind of things that we gotta go through in this life and make not haste in the time of trouble it says cleave unto him and depart not away that thou mayest be increased in thy last end whatsoever is brought upon thee take cheerfully and be patient when thou art charged to a low estate which is something that will happen to a man of the most high very often for goal is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity now let me get our word what adversity mean Must see adversity, the state of adverse conditions, state of misfortune or calamity, an event that is adverse calamity, which is hardship. Not prosperity, as I like to teach in churches. We're supposed to be going through hardship or affliction, and that is what the fire refers to. So they may go in a church and attend to sow a seed and you'll get riches like Creff O'Donnell. You know something wrong. Are we supposed to be going through affliction? So the first Peter 1, I'll start from 6. It says, Wherein ye greatly rejoice, so you're supposed to be happy, to now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Because the hardship doesn't last constantly. It does have a time period you'll go through hardship and a time period you'll get all ease up. But you're supposed to rejoice when you're going through hardship because that is a part of the fire, a part of the a part of your conditioning. It said that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perish it, though it be tried with fire, which is affliction, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearance of Yahweh Shai Mashiach. So we're supposed to be going through this and taking it cheerfully until the Messiah return. It's not about gaining riches and birds, as it is say, clothes and money. It said this is first Peter four verse twelve. It said, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you because when people start to serve the most side the correct way and they start to go through hardship that is like that does feel like it shouldn't be this way but that is actually something normal as the scriptures say in Ecclesiasticus is to prepare your soul for temptation all of this is to condition you it say but rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Mashiach suffering that when his glory shall be revealed ye may be glad also with exceeding joy so the same way telling you that the messiah suffer while he was here is the same way you are to go through tribulation while you're here 
and when he returns the same glory that he have you will have glory with him also so it's not about establishing your kingdom here or anything like that it's about going through tribulation which is a part of the baptism which is classed as the fire not a literal fire so there's Ephesians 3 verse 13 it say wherefore I desire that ye faint not at my tribulations for you so you're not supposed to faint or give up when you start to go through hardship all oh, this is a part of the process which is your glory because this is to make you how the most I want you to be like a soldier right now on the battlefield you're going through the different experiences because he's training you and that is what the fire really refer to now the scriptures say you'll be baptized with fire and with the Holy Spirit now let me see what the Holy Spirit is it says second Peter 1 verse, I'll start from 20 it says knowing this first that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation I right, have very good reasons for that it says for the prophecy came not in old times by the will of man but holy men of the most high speak as they were moved by the holy spirit because the holy spirit is what gave them the understanding of the scriptures to be able to write it down in that time so it is ephesians 3 or star from 3 it say how that by revelation he made known unto me the mysteries as i wrote afore in few words whereby when ye read ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Mashiach which is Christ in Hebrew which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of man of men as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit because the Holy Spirit in past days is what gave them the understanding to write the scriptures and is what given the apostles and prophets the ability to understand the scriptures in this modern time and that is what the Holy Spirit is not like what is teaching the Trinity the Father Son and Holy Spirit that is something that they include from their ancient Babylonian doctrines you understand I used to, as you used to have the Trinity with Tamos Samaramis and, and Nimrod and in Egypt it was something similar Tara and Amin which was the three the three Egyptian gods that is something that they try to include in the scriptures but it had no trinity it had no trinity like that in the scriptures the Holy Spirit refers to the understanding of the scriptures and that is also a part of the baptism because you can't apply and live by something you don't understand so the Holy Spirit which is the understanding of the scriptures is one of the first steps of the baptism for you to actually know how to live according to the scriptures and after you learn and you live you're living according to the scriptures the baptism the fire part is what will condition you during that space of time so there's a short breakdown on baptism but you learn something with that I like to say Shalom Kal Halal Yahweh Bashaw Miao Shai I like to give all I like to give honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that rule well and salutation to the Akim around the world that pushes truth and sincerity Shalom